Now we're going to promote the leg and the spine controls. To do this, we're going to open up the Asset Properties window. Go to Parameters. We're going to start by dragging over a few folders. This will help us organize the different parameters uh, to build the UI for the character. We're going to start by creating a folder for the head. Next, we're going to create one for the body. Then we'll do the legs. And then we'll do one called main for some of the main controls, top level controls. And then in the legs folder, we're going to add two more folders. And we're going to do one for left and one for right. That'll help us separate those out. So first thing we're going to do is start putting the parameters we already have into these folders. So we're going to take the main controls and put them in the main folder. The COG we're going to put in the body. The pelvis we're also going to, we're going to put it in the legs but above the two folders for left and right. And we'll put the, the left heel in the left folder and the right heel in the right folder. So everything we've created so far we have organized now. Now we can go to the different things like the knee offset for instance. And we're going to drag over the right knee. And we're going to call that right knee offset. And then we're going to do the same with the left. And we're going to call that left knee offset. And we're going to lock the other parameters that we're not going to use in this case, which is the rotate and scale. So right click and then choose lock parameter. The next thing we're going to do is click on the foot re one here, which this gives us really access to the toe and all of those. So what we want to do is we're only going to bring these, the one parameter over. So double click into that parameter and drag that over. So in this case we're going to start with the right ball. We're going to call that the right ball rotate. And then we'll do the same with the left ball. Bring that over here. Left ball rotate. So everything that we want to be able to manipulate uh, on our final animation rig we need to create a parameter for that. So now we're also going to do the right toe. And the left toe. And remember the heel we already did. We already promoted that. So now we've got the all the different parts of the foot. The heel, the toe, and the ball set up there. Now one thing you might want to do with some of these things is put in a range. So for instance, the, the right ball, we might want to go from 0 to 30 as a, as a proper range for that. And then the toe, maybe we go 0 to 20. Now remember, you can always pick later a parameter outside this range, but this range just means that the slider itself has a little bit more meaning uh, because it does more or less what you might want. And let's get um, a separator. We'll just in and include a separator in there for UI purposes. Just to separate out some of the, the toe stuff from the rest of the rest of the foot. And we're going to accept that. Now, if we do that, we go up to this level, and we're going to see there's all our folders with all the different parts that we've got so far. So left, right, main. And that's ready to go. And if we jump to the test rig, um, that also will have those, those various controls. And because we have those controls, we can now grab some of these things on the foot, like for instance, the ball or the toe um, or any of the other controls, and they're available for us to manipulate. So this is the, again, the benefit or the, the purpose of promoting these parameters is to make them available on a locked asset. So 
when you have a locked asset like this test rig, you can only animate those things that have been promoted up. You can only manipulate those things that have been promoted up without unlocking. And we want to be able to let an animator work with this without unlocking. So lots of control here now. Um, but we want to add more. We're going to need to do the spine and the eyes and the mouth and so on. So that'll be, you know, coming in a, in a future step. In the meantime, you know, we can control all of these things. We've even got the knee offset there and so on. So if we jump Quick Mark 2 back into the network, then we can say, well, let's let's promote some other things. So let's create a, a section down here. Let's go tab, delete joints, and we're going to bring that over. And in this case, we're specifically going to select joints that we haven't done yet. So this would include the three spine joints and the two neck joints and the jaw because those are all things we may want to animate. So we're going to just focus on those and let us work with those independently and then we'll again as we usually do merge those back in. So the next thing we will do is a rig pose. The rig pose will take all of those different parts of the animation rig and make them available for us for manipulation and then we'll blend that back in. Okay, world space, weight it to one. Always got to remember to do that with your skeleton blends. And what we'll do now is on the rig pose, we're going to want to make sure we have the right parameters. Let's call this rig pose spine. Delete joint spine and skeleton blend spine. Helps to name these things if you want to remember them or easily remember them when you're looking at the network later. So we're going to take those and put them in a network box just like we done before. Spine controls. And now we've got to make sure, let's just select all of those so they show up inside the rig pose and that will make them all available for us to to animate uh, to or well after we promote it. So let's again go to the asset, um, edit asset properties for the animation rig. And let's start bringing some other pieces over. So we've got neck one and neck two. Uh, we don't want to translate those. We don't want to scale those. We only want to rotate. And the same with neck two. We only want to rotate that. So what we'll do is, uh, oh, and the jaw, we'll only want to rotate that as well. So we drag that over into head. So we've got neck one rotate. rotate. And then we're going to do the same with the second one. Oh, Nick, <laughs> neck, uh, Nick not neck, neck, two, rotate. And then we're going to get the jaw and bring that in as well. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to get those three spines over. So we're going to lock again, translate, and we'll put this into the body and we'll name this spine one rotate. And again, we could actually promote these things and not rename them, um, but it certainly is beneficial uh, when organizing and figuring out where things are if we take the time to uh, get these names right. So we'll call this one spine two. And we'll do the same with spine three. And once these are in here, then these uh, these things which will drive with sort of forward kinematics, which is rotating joints, um, they will be available to us on the final animation rig. So spine three, and let's put a separator in there, and press accept. And remember, press and accept saves everything, the changes you've made back into the asset, both in the network and above. If we go up above, you see we've got those controls there. 
Uh, and if we go to the test rig, you see those have updated as well. So we now have the ability to do parts of the spine. Uh, and if we get the jaw here, we can now rotate the jaw open and close. So there. So that gives us a lot of control on this character. And really the only thing left is the eye, the eyelids and the eyeball. Uh, and we'll tackle those in a second. But for all intents and purposes, we're in good shape to start rigging this character once these things, um, now that these things are in place. And always remember to take some time with your test rig to make sure that what you want to do and the controls you want to have are working properly, because uh, you can always go back and make changes uh, if need be.